In vitro fertilization is when the egg and sperm are combined outside the body in a petri dish. When she begins to ovulate, the ovum is removed from the woman's ovaries and the sperm fertilizes it in a laboratory. The fertile last egg is then implanted into the woman's uterus with hope for a pregnancy. And they fertilize an egg with sperm in a petri dish and they allow that to develop into a zygote, which is basically a ball of cells. PGD is genetic testing used to detect genetic defects in the embryo. This is also used for sex selection. With PGD, you could test for genetic defects such as Down syndrome, Tay-Sachs, or Huntington's disease. and they can go in and test the DNA that is in those cells, the combined DNA from the mother and the father, and check it for genetic mutations, or select the most healthy embryos to implant into the mother. So sometimes PGD is used for sex selection. Um, we do have patients that come to us wanting to have a child of a particular gender. Um, oftentimes these are families who may already have two children of a given gender, and at this point, um, you know, they're hoping to have the third be, be the opposite gender. I think a lot of parents have an idea of what gender of child they want. I secretly always wanted a boy, and I got lucky because I had one. I didn't care what, I, what gender of children we had. I just wanted the babies to be healthy. My wife, she wanted at least two boys. We ended up getting two girls and uh, one boy, but they were all healthy, and so that was what was important to me. There's been a lot of concern about using ultrasound or genetic uh, information to determine if it's a boy, so you can have a boy. We we had a preference for girls, actually. I wanted a boy because I felt like I can relate to him more and deal with him better because I didn't know how I would deal with a girl. We still recommend um, for patients that become pregnant that they do consider doing prenatal testing such as a CVS or an amniocentesis. Um, and the reason for that is because PGD testing is not 100% accurate. Depending on the type of testing you're doing and also the cell that we're testing, um, the accuracy can range from 90 to 98%. And when you do testing on a CVS or amniocentesis, that testing is usually greater than 99% accurate. They do um, uh, what's called a level two ultrasound where they do more extensive measuring of the fetus to determine if there are any markers for a genetic disability. And then if someone displays, if the, the fetus displays markers of a genetic disability, like a large head size or abnormal limb length, they will suggest that the person undergoes an amniocentesis. Uh, because I didn't have any of those, it was never even suggested for me. But I do have friends that have had to make the decision whether or not to undergo an amniocentesis. And most people I know have chosen not to because there is a pretty high risk of miscarriage surrounding amniocentesis because they have to actually put a hole in the wall of the uterus. I do see a line between genetic enhancement, right, trying to improve upon children that we're going to have, and genetic testing to eliminate really serious disabilities. I don't want to um, suggest, you know, that we don't want people with disabilities in the world, but we know that some of them are so severe, e either the child will die within a year or two of birth, or, you know, they may live for 30 or 40 years and then have this horrible death. Okay, sex disease is a genetic mutation. It's most common in the Jewish population. Um, it's a brutal disease. Um, typically, kids who have that disease, I believe the average lifespan is under five years old. It's, um, it mutates the nervous system, the muscular system. A lot of children with Tay-Sachs never learn to speak, never learn to walk. Um, they never have what would be considered a normal existence. There's a case right now that's in the news and 
that talks about um, a set of parents who had genetic testing done to test their child for any genetic mutations and she tested negative for everything and she was born with Down syndrome which is a genetic mutation and so they sued the genetic testing company and won 2.9 million dollars for wrongful birth they called it because the parents would have chosen to terminate the pregnancy had they known. It's devastating to our families to see you know, parents who are this far along in the journey question their daughter's value and, and suggest that they would not have chosen to have her. She fears this ruling will lead to others, which is devastating for parents like Crable. Nothing's for certain. Who see Down syndrome not as a death sentence, <laughs> up and down, but rather yeah. something to right. celebrate. It's been very controversial, right? If in the world of Down syndrome and in that community, they want to do genetic testing for women that are pregnant if their baby has Down syndrome or is susceptible for Down syndrome before you're even pregnant. And they just announced on the news that that test has been approved. I think that parents should be cautious about questioning what a disability can do for their kid because sometimes you can look at a disability as a strength. So I don't think that parents should look at a disability and think that their kid might have a hard time in school or in life. And so you can imagine, right, do you really believe, you know, and I work in the field of disability, is, is this really even a disorder, right? Is this what's wrong with having Down syndrome? We know that children who have Down syndrome have wonderful gifts. Right? Do we really want a genetically modified society where everybody's perfect and the same? Many ethical concerns arise due to the results of prenatal genetic testing. With the ability to choose gender, I think it could cause people to think that one sex is better than the other. Sex selection could disrupt the natural balance of gender. It could also initiate the statement that women live in a man's world. When disabilities being potentially eradicated, could question disabled children's existence as well as their place in society. Prenatal genetic testing is routinely being done and the science is getting more sophisticated. There isn't any medical legislation stating the limits of it. It's based on what science is able to do. So it makes me question, what does our future really hold?